Okay, so welcome to day two of our lesson number nine. Today we're going to look at how we draw images using different types of lenses. Uh, again, if you haven't tried that activity from Explore Learning yet from the previous page, I really strongly encourage you to do so. It will make this quite easy if you do that. Uh, and it will help you with your understanding in that regard. So I just want to bring some attention to this chart here, which you would have filled in from the activity. The location is such a crucial component because not only will it help us to determine the SALT, if you recall this acronym SALT from our reflections, we're going to be doing those again for our uh, images that are produced using a lens. When you recognize the type of lens that it is, in this case, a convex or converging lens, and when you look at the type of lens and you look at where the object is located, you will begin to start to see some patterns arise as a result of its location and what forms as a result of it uh, in terms of the image, right? So at the end of the day, when, it looks, uh, when we look at a convex or converging lens, the vast majority of the image types will be real with the exception of when the object is located inside of that F prime, where it will give us a virtual image. That's like really the big one. And then the second big one is when the image or when the object is located on F prime directly, that no image will be formed. And I'm going to show you why that's the case today, because uh, for those of you that, like I said, did that activity, it might be a little bit tricky to, to kind of put that together. And if you haven't done the activity, then you're definitely going to have some trouble with it. Okay, so how do we draw ray diagrams for converging lenses? So again, when we think about the rules that we followed with regards to our mirrors, the same rules apply here, but we have to recognize for which type of lens. So when we draw a ray diagram for converging lenses, a ray parallel to the principal axis is refracted through the principal focus. So that's that F, not F prime, but F. So when I look at my in incidence ray, let me just pick a skinnier highlighter color. Here's my incidence ray, parallel to the principal axis. The refracted ray will go through that F, much like how we saw in mirrors, the same thing happens with regards to converging lenses. Looking at when something, when the incidence ray goes through that secondary principal focus on the other side of the mirror, that F prime, it is refracted parallel to the principal axis. Same rules, okay? And so now we have two refracted rays with which we can figure out where the location of our image is, okay? Lastly, a ray through the optical center continues straight through without being refracted. This is true because the middle part of the lens acts like a very thin rectangular prism and no noticeable sideways displacement is seen. So this is a simplified version. You only have to understand how to draw it in this simplified version. I won't ask for anything more complex. In grade 12 physics, you might have to, but cross that bridge when you get there. So let's take a look at one example. And let's follow that rule, those patterns that we saw. So this is a this is a converging lens. So in a converging lens, when we have a ray that's parallel to the principal axis, ray that's parallel to the principal axis, we're going to get a refracted ray that goes right through that focus point. Then when we have a incidence ray that goes through that F, in this case F prime, we're going to have a refracted ray that travels parallel to the principal axis. So here we now can draw our image, just like with our reflections. We know that the point of intersection will be where the image is located. And in this example, we're going to have it be upside down. So let's fill in this salt chart together. And then that will be the end of my one example that I post on the uh, for the video. And then we can take up some other examples. So size, what do we notice uh, about the size? What do we notice about the size? Is it smaller or bigger than the arrow? In this example, it's smaller. So we put smaller. We know that its altitude is upside down.
and our location is between F and 2F. Oops. Between F and 2F. And then lastly, the type. The type, we have a virtual. Oops. I made a mistake. It's a real image. It's a real image. Just double checking to make sure that I'm good. And I'll explain that afterwards. I just want to finish recording the steps for drawing that. And so if you have questions, please post them in that document. 